lesson. And on your fifth lesson, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing descriptive modeling and accuracy. Our objectives are to define the appropriate quantities for descriptive modeling, so what numbers are appropriate, as well as choose the appropriate levels of accuracy. So figuring out what type of accuracy we need when solving a problem. The standards we're going to be addressing is uh, standard NQ2 and NQ3, um, numbers and quantities standard 2 and 3. So make sure that you have everything on the slide at the top of your notes because now we're going to get started. We have two vocab words for our lesson today. The first vocab word is metric. A metric is a rule for assigning a number to some characteristic or an attribute. So one example of this might be batting average when looking at baseball or free throw percentages when looking at basketball. We assign a number to that value. It's a characteristic or it's an attribute, an attribute of how much people make free throws. Accuracy is the extent to which a given measurement agrees with the standard value for that measurement. So the accuracy that we present is based on how much that we're getting closest to the measurement. Okay, so accuracy, the closer we get, the more accurate it is. The least closer we get, the least accurate it is. Um, sometimes we'll end up with things that are very accurate. Sometimes we'll end up with things where the best measurement is not the most accurate, but the one that um, uses the biggest number, like when we're talking about how many miles it is from here to Florida, um, we might not want to put that in feet. We might want to use miles instead because miles is a bigger unit of measurement for that type of information. So accuracy is the extent to which a given measurement agrees with the standard for value for that. So the standard value for measuring distance between like maybe two cities is miles. So accuracy and metric. That's what we're going to be talking about in today's lesson. So make sure you have your vocab and let's move on to our first example. In example one, what we're doing is we're looking at a question that has three different parts. Do not get it confused with the multiple choice question. A lot of times I have students that say, well, I see A, B, C. Sometimes I see a D. I'm going to pick one of those and that's the answer. Um, what happens is sometimes a question has many different parts that we have to actually read the directions of every part. So in example one, it says, suppose you measure the basketball court at a school and record the measurement in inches, feet, and yards. So we're going to record a basketball court's measurements in three different units of measurement. The first question that we have says, determine which measurement is going to be rounded to the nearest whole number. Now, you want to think about which measurement is going to be rounded to the nearest whole number, but stay the most accurate, the most closest to the actual answer that it's supposed to. And if you're thinking inches, you're absolutely right. So, part A, the answer is inches. If we measure in inches, we're very close to the actual size of a basketball court, and that's one of the things that we do want to have. Determine which measurement is rounded to the nearest half, tenth, or smaller, and still remains the most accurate. So, if we're going to round to the nearest half and still be very, very close to the accuracy, yards are actually our best option. We're going to be the most appropriate for the situation when measuring basketball court and rounding and still getting as accurate as possible with these other two units of measurement. So, if we're rounding to the half, the best unit of measurement is yards. And if we're rounding to the nearest tenth and still remaining the most accurate out of these three measurements by rounding differently, um, then the best unit of measurement when rounding to the nearest tenth would be feet. And if we were to measure something even smaller than half of something or a tenth of something and try to remain most accurate out of these three units of measurement, the best out of all these when measuring something really small is inches when rounding. So I'm going to write small and inches. So in this question, you actually have three different parts at which you're answering. You're answering which one is best to the nearest half, nearest tenth, or smaller when using these three different units of measurement. So you have to label what each one would be best for. In part C, it says which one is the most appropriate measurement for finding the length of a basketball court. If you were finding the length of a basketball court, do you really think you're going to measure it in inches or yards? The best unit of measurement when measuring a basketball court is actually in feet. If you're measuring a football field, I totally understand yards because that's how they actually do um, a football field. They say, you know, they've got five yards to the next first down. So 
In football, I'd understand yards as being the most appropriate unit of measurement. But a basketball court really isn't too large. That measuring in feet is still pretty good and pretty accurate. So if we were measuring a basketball court, the unit of measurement that's most appropriate to the length of the court is actually in feet. Now, there is one more question that I have for you. Which one of these units of measurement, out of these three, is the most accurate unit of measurement if you were to measure a basketball court? If you're thinking inches, you're absolutely correct. The smaller unit of measurement is the most accurate unit of measurement when measuring any type of item. The smaller we can get, the closer we're going to get to the actual measurement. So, if you had to get the most accurate unit of measurement, the smallest unit of measurement is the best solution. Let's go ahead and try another example. Hopefully it's a little bit smaller than this one, and you guys will be happy about that. In example two, what we're looking at is a problem with downloading music. Nick has $27 to spend on downloading music from the Internet. Each download costs $1.25. When he types in his calculator, 27 divided by $1.25, um, he gets the number 21.6. That appears. The question is, where should Nick round? and explain how you know where he should round when seeing this number. Should he round 21.6 up or should he round 21.6 down in this situation? So think about money and think about the fact that it costs $1.25 to download this music. Okay, now if you were thinking that he should round this number up, that means that he could download 22 songs at $1.25 a piece. But does he have that much money? No. Since he doesn't have that much money, he cannot download 22 songs. So rounding up in this case is technically not the right answer. What he might want to do is he might want to download 21 songs because he will have enough money to download that and he won't go over his budget of $27. So, he must round down He must round down to have enough. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you why he must round down. So if I take 22 times 125, this means that if he wanted to download 22 songs, he'd have that $27.50. But in the problem we see, he only has $27. So we can't just add 50 cents and say, well, you know what, he can download 22 songs. In this case, we know that if he's staying within his budget of $27, he could download 21, and that 21 song to $1.25 a piece, this right here would equal $26.25, which means he technically would have enough money to download 21 songs and still be good. So sometimes we don't always have to round up, even though the number is five or more. It all depends on the situation that we're reading. So make sure you know when to round up and when to round down based on the situation that's being asked of you. Let's keep going. We're almost done already. And in this question, we're going to talk about everybody's favorite topic, pizza. So here we have Jasmine, and she wants to share a pizza equally among herself and two of her other friends. She cuts the pizza into eight equal slices. Each person is given two pieces of pizza. When she types 8 divided by 3 in her calculator, she gets 2.6, and that 6 just keeps going on forever. Where should she round? So in this problem, you want to think, should she round the number of slices that each person gets up, or should you, she round that number of slices down? And if she rounds it down, how is she supposed to split up the last two pieces of pizza? So, if she rounded up to three, would she have enough pizza? If the answer is no, what we need to do is explain. There's not enough for three equal slices. Now, we know there's not enough for three equal slices because three times three is nine, and she only made eight slices. Um, so now what we want to do is we want to look at, okay, well, she gives everybody two slices. So, well, two times three is six. There's two slices left. What should she do with the last two pieces of pizza? 
All right, I think you got it. Hopefully you're thinking that she should take those last two pieces of pizza and divide each one three times equally. And if she does that three times, each person gets one-third apiece. And if you did that twice, each person would actually have two-thirds. So if she divides the last piece of pizza, or the last two pieces of pizza, into three equal slices, each person would get two extra thirds, and that would be giving everybody an equal amount of pizza so nobody feels left out. So what we want to do is we say there's not enough for three slices. However, she could divide it into two slices each, and the remaining two She could divide those into thirds, and each person would get two of those. So if Angela is actually wanting to share her pizza equally among three herself and two other people, which is three people total, the best thing that she could do is to give out two slices to everybody, and then with the remaining two slices, cut it into three pieces, and each person get a third until you have no pieces remaining. So technically, every person would have two and two-thirds pieces of pizza. Let's go ahead and do another problem. In example four, what we have is a really long word problem that talks about grass seed. Make sure you copy this problem down. We're going to go ahead and solve this problem. Here it says Hannah is buying grass seed for her lawn. The amount of seed depends on the size of the lawn and how the seed is applied. One 40-pound bag will cover 5,000 square feet. How accurate does Hannah need to be to buy the correct amount of seed to cover a lawn that's 8,000 feet square? So we know that Hannah's lawn is 8,000 feet square, and she wants to cover the entire thing so that way there's no, like, dirt patches anyway in the grass. Um, we also know that a 40-pound bag would cover 5,000 square feet. Our question is, how much does she need to cover 8,000 square feet? So, if we know that a 40-pound bag will cover 5,000 square feet, and we know that she has 8,000 square feet to cover, what do you think we should do? Hopefully you're thinking that we should take 8,000 divided by 5,000, because this is what one bag gives us in coverage, and then we could kind of figure out around where that decimal is. Let's go ahead and do that. 8,000 divided by 5,000. I'm going to type that in my calculator. 8,000. Divided by 5,000 equals 1.6 bags. Okay, so here in this problem, we see that Hannah needs 1.6 bags of grass seed in order to cover her entire lawn. Now, do you think you can go to the store and be like, well, I want one bag and I want 0.6 or 6 tenths of the other bag. I don't want to buy the whole thing, I just want the other one. Think about that. And then think about how many bags do you think that she should buy in order to completely cover 8,000 and be safe. Hopefully you're thinking that Hannah actually needs two bags. Because two bags would be enough to cover everything, and then if she needs a little bit extra, she's got a little bit extra. She could not go to the store and be like, well, I want one bag, and I want a little bit of the other one. I don't want the whole thing, so you can only charge me for the other part. So make sure that you understand that you need to round up sometimes when dealing with how much you need of something in order to c complete coverage. Usually paint is another thing that you typically like to round up. Unless it's very close, then it's okay to round down because usually paint is an estimate. Let's go ahead and do one more problem. It might be a long word problem, but you guys are doing all right, and we'll see what happens. In example five, we're going to talk about painting a driveway. Here we have Riley wants to seal coat his driveway, and each down of seal coat covers about 200 square feet. He measures the driveway to be 1,010 feet square. 
How many gallons of seal coat should he buy in order to paint his driveway? So our job is to figure out how much of paint he should buy so he's not spending way too much money that he might not need to spend. So we need to decide whether or not we're going to round the number up or round the number down based on the information. So we need to pick the best appropriate unit of measurement when solving this problem. So we do know that he has 1,010 square feet of driveway that he's actually going to be painting. We also know that a gallon of paint will cover 200 square feet. So that piece of information is very important when solving this problem. We would take 1,010 and divide it by 200. And this would tell us about how many gallons of paint Riley might need. So 1,010 divided by 200 equals 5.05 gallons. Now, most people would say when painting something, it's better to overestimate so you definitely have enough paint to cover the entire area. But since this is very, very, very close to the number five, it's okay to underestimate because when it says that a gallon of paint covers 200 square feet, that's just an estimate. And they're kind of rounding up, they're kind of rounding down. So since this is close, it's okay to say that maybe we need five gallons of paint rather than six. So five gallons would be most appropriate um, because it's closest to the number that we have. And what we're looking at is an estimate. Now, if five gallons is not enough, then that means their accuracy on the paint just isn't quite there. Hopefully, you guys have an understanding that in this lesson, our job is to figure out whether or not we're going to round a decimal up or we're going to round a decimal down. And then also, I hope that you guys understand that accuracy is the unit of measurement that's closest to the accurate way of solving the problem based on the situation that's given. So in this case, it's better to measure something in gallons and round up and round down to the nearest hole based on the situation that's given. That's it for today. Make sure you have all five examples in your notes. And if you do, bring it up to me in class, and I'll give you a sucker um, because you guys did awesome today. And just seeing if you're paying attention. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that notification bell. And I'll see you tomorrow.